We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm, I'm Luis. Uh, no and you're listening to the Content is Profit one, podcast. Two, we spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. And today, we're bringing them to you so you can take action immediately and start creating real content momentum. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh, yeah. That's right. Happy Wednesday. And we are back for another incredible episode of Content is Profit. Today, we have a very special guest here with us. We met her through PodMax, an incredible podcasting event you need to check out for sure. And immediately knew we needed to share her message. That's mm. right. Since that moment, we have literally seen her everywhere. She is currently the CEO of Chet Holmes International, which has helped over two hundred thousand businesses in the last 25 years just talk about Ooh, impact baby Ooh. she is the daughter of legendary entrepreneur and author chet holmes who wrote the ultimate sales machine after inheriting the business today's guest managed to double the company's clients two years in a row impressive and now she has set she is set on a mission of teaching others how to do the same hmm. that is right not to mention she is one of the friendliest people in the internet and i'm sure she's one of the friendliest people in the world as well in person please welcome incredible entrepreneur creator of the dream buyer course and our new awesome friend amanda, amanda holmes <laughs> Welcome, Amanda. <laughs> Hello. Wow, that was a high-powered intro. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Yeah, it, I, I'm going to say we do it like that because sometimes, you know, at the middle of the day, we need a, that little pick-me-up as well. The caffeine already went down. So it's like, oh, we need to re-energize. <laughs> Yes, uh, Amanda, I, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. And I want to highlight your commitment to yes. putting your message out there. Oh my God. Can we, can we, I mean, can we describe a little bit where you are right now? I think that's, this is wonderful because I mean, the commitment to your, to your message, the commitment to your mm -hmm. community, the commitment to, to, you know, collaborating with other creators. Ah, so good. I am in the middle of nowhere, Texas. I, <laughs> I'm in the midst. I had some meetings in Austin. Now I had to do a drive and I'll be in Missouri tonight and then Orlando and then Puerto Rico, but I'm on the road. I'm committed to being here. Uh, it's just a car show today. That, it's yeah, it's That's amazing. I mean, talk about technology, right? And we often say like with the show and, and committing with, uh, with publishing, right? Like th there's literally no excuses to get our message out there. And, and you know, we're going to discover this through the episode. Yeah. I just want to say thank you. So I, uh, wait, wait, I just want to say something. We're, we have another thing in common. I used to live in nowhere, Texas, actually. That place where you are seems very familiar. Let me tell you, right? I lived in a, in a small town called Wichita Falls my first year here in the United States. And oh. I, yeah, I felt like I was in the middle of nowhere. I was like, where am I? But it was a beautiful experience. I love Texas, yeah. um, but now we, yeah, we live the the, the Florida life. <laughs> the Florida it's, life is pretty yeah. nice. <laughs> now, um, Amanda, for those who might not be very familiar, which now if you are an entrepreneur and you're not familiar with, you know, your concepts and uh, you and your last name and your dad, right? Like, would you want to share a little bit of like your story? Like how do, I mean, we understand that this was not the initial path that you took on and uh, something changed along the way. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Well, let me back it up just a moment and say, so my father got his big break working for a billionaire, Charlie Munger, who's the co-chairman of Berkshire Hathaway with Warren Buffett. And he was able to double the sales of nine different divisions for him all within 12 to 15 months. And each one of them within or and, and multiple of them multiple years consecutively. So oh. it was magnificent what he was able to create. He worked with over 60 of the Fortune 500 as clients. That's where our methodology started. And he realized that he could only make so much of an impact if it was just himself. So he trained hundreds, well, him and the staff trained hundreds of different coaches and consultants around the world so that we could grow to be able to assist so many businesses worldwide. Yeah. Uh, I was a singer songwriter. My father, if you asked me what he did, I said, oh, he runs companies. <laughs> I, I didn't really know much. Um, and then he got ill 
and unfortunately passed away. That was the only battle he ever lost because I tell you, he had enough pig-headed discipline and determination to do anything. Um, so he passed in 2012. That was extremely difficult while grieving. I was very close with him. I was born on his birthday. So if you can imagine, there was just this wow. kismet relationship. And wow. uh, to go from just you know, my fourth record to now I have a couple hundred staff looking around. They're all double my age. I'm in my twenties. Everyone else is in their fifties and sixties. And, um, yeah, we, here we are eight years later. I've been CEO for the last six and we doubled sales last year. It was really nice. And just carrying on my father's legacy and adapting and integrating with what needs improvement or, or, um, with the change in the internet and all of that goodness, yeah. but it's mostly timeless. The, what I, what my father taught from faxes and direct mail, I now incorporate in DMS on Instagram and LinkedIn messages. So yes, I love it. I love this. Um, you know, Amanda, I'm going to be 100% honest. Uh, I, I read the book. I read the ultimate sales machine about a year, probably a year and a half ago. He, he's yeah. obsessed with the notes. Can yeah. you see, you can, can you see you can that? I took, I took a lot of notes yeah. in this book. Oh, I love it. And it was one of the <laughs> first books, honestly, that, you know, that made me think about principles and foundations rather, uh, rather than tactics and strategies. Right. And I loved it. I love the fact that, like you mentioned, pig headed discipline, right? He uses those same exact words in the book. And I think it's, it, it was fantastic because at that moment, I was definitely suffering of shiny object syndrome, right? <laughs> uh, SOS, and I just had my attention everywhere. And this gave me a little bit of a structure on what to do, right? At that moment, um, we, we thought we had a business, but we were just freelancers, right? We were just grabbing jobs here and there, trying to, yeah. trying to play business, right? If I may put it in a, in a nice way. And this allowed us to get a little bit more structure in what we were doing. And I'm extremely gr grateful for that, right? That being said, I'm going to be honest, like until PodMax, I didn't know Chet Holmes had a daughter. Like I didn't go too into like his world. And when I met you at PodMax, I was like, oh, that is so cool. And I love the fact that you're still working on this, that you believe so much in what your dad was doing, that you are like, you know what? These principles and foundations are timeless. I don't want people to, you know, forget about them. I, I want this message to keep to to still be out there. And you yeah. put yourself out there as well and you share this message and you believe so much in what you guys are doing with it, which is absolutely amazing. Now I'm extremely curious on how was that transition for you, right? Going from being a singer to now running such an incredible company. Uh, an utter nightmare. <laughs> 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 it was terrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a miracle that we're here today. It really is. Um, I got very lucky to have some wonderful people to assist me along the way, but um, it was, it was brutal. I don't know. I don't know exactly what you want. No, 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 so, so, yeah. I, I think this is wonderful. I mean, the fact that you're showing such a, such honesty, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it could be very simple being like, oh yeah, I mean, it was, it was a cool transition and is is what's meant to be right. And, and we're here to highlight the path of the, of the entrepreneur. And sometimes we get there in place, you, this very different background mm -hmm. and uh, now you're, in charge of this incredible company that's creating actual change in the world. I mean, people implementing these principles of foundation. I mean, for us, it meant a lot. I remember having our first like, meeting. like a first <laughs> meeting, like yeah. us just funds. Like now we there's a team, right? And we do it every single day and there's a process. But I remember having that first meeting and we're like, what structure are we going to follow? Like, we don't know what we don't know. And we use the structures and the frameworks in the book to start that. And that ignited this fire in us, it ignited the fire of progress, ignited the fire of taking action and change start to happen. And we launched the show and everything changed after that, right? Like people are familiar with the story. So um, that's why we kind of ask because, I mean, for a lot of entrepreneurs, they might be feeling that they're in a place 
that they might not belong or they're jumping into a place that is very unknown. Mm -hmm. Like maybe, I don't know how, how well you knew the company inside out to be able to run it at the time, right? And, and, and that adapting and moving on. So my question to you is like, what kept you going, right? Because normally as human beings, we, we tend to reject that, right? We, we get into a position like that and we're like, uh -uh, no, I'm going to go back to the familiar thing. But the entrepreneurs are the crazy ones that are like, I'm going to push through, right? Like George Bryan says, I'm going to be the bison. I'm going to be the guy that goes through that storm, right? Because the fastest way possible. So what kept you going? Why do you make that decision and continue to, to implement in the company and now impacting, you know, thousands, if not millions? Um, well, a, a, a big influence for me was actually, I study under an Indian saint, uh, Sarvaloka Her Holiness Sri 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 1008 Guruji Punamji. It's quite long, or you could just refer to her as Guruji. And she yeah. kept telling me that it would be part of my destiny to assist and carry on my father's legacy. And I'd look at her and I'd go, no way. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. This is crazy. And I mean, just the craziest of things would happen. Um, for the first two years, I was looking at different C-suites, trying to hire different CEOs, different CMOs, different presidents, VPs, you name it, just trying to fill the hole that my father left. You know, He wasn't a part of the day-to-day -day business for a long time, but it was as if this whole organism was lost, had lost its heart. And yeah. um, to fill that void was very difficult. And uh, I remember the first week that I stepped in as CEO, I finally said, okay, I'm going to do this. And so I said, yes, within the week, my merchant services shut down our accounts because somebody internally had told them that they didn't think that I could run the business. So mm -hmm. hundreds of people weren't going to get paid there because payroll was cut and held with merchant services. I got served a lawsuit. I got one of my main JVs was uh, up in arms. I mean, it was just, it was utter mayhem. My CRM system, we were about to go into Salesforce and then we stopped it completely. And I had to decide whether we were going to stay with the current CRM system or have no CRM system. I didn't even know what a CRM system was. I didn't even know what a merchant processor was. I'm like, these people are really important. Wow. I really need to know what this is. Right. Wow. So it was, yeah. it was utterly insane. And a huge part that got me through was just being able to, um, find a place to calm myself and get into actually more of a meditative state to just kind of say, please let me be a conduit and just guide me on what I need to do. Cause I obviously cannot be in control of the situation. I just surrender. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was a big part of it. Uh, my guru mm -hmm. and, and divine bliss is a nonprofit. And um, once the mental piece was a bit there, <laughs> then I just yeah. started following my father's methodology. Wow. There you go. I mean, what, I mean, other than that, the proof of concept that, I mean, please guys go ahead and get the book. I mean, the ultimate sales machine, we're going to talk about more about that because yeah. I mean, the, the fact that of that situation, as you're telling it, like my anxiety levels were just like increasing and I'm like, <laughs> this is insane. Just like picturing, like picturing that, that, that environment. Right. And sometimes we, we have these little bumps in the road or big bumps in the road. Right. And, and you just gave a roadmap of, okay, let me, let me surrender. Like that's so hard to do. Right. Yeah. Like, let me surrender and and props to you to your guide and your guru incredible and thank you for that person to put you in this spot that now you're able to help so so many others right and, and i appreciate you sharing that that story yeah absolutely i mean same as my brother my anxiety levels were <laughs> rising through the roof as you were sharing this story. and i think it, it talks about how important it is to you know be connected with yourself and be able to reflect and stop at the moments like that i think that is something that isn't it's being started to be talked a little bit more, but it's not, it, I think people don't talk about it enough. There, there's a lot of, you know, we get indoctrinated into the entrepreneurship world with the, the hustle, 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 right? And not about, hey, stop, reflect on what you're doing. Is it what you're doing the right thing, right? Like how can we, uh, you know, align ourselves with what we actually want and be proactive in that sense, right? Again, proactive, another word that I love from the book, right? It talks about doing business in a proactive way uh, rather than a, pro a reactive way. And I feel a lot of people just live in that reactive state. 
Um, so I, I would love to transition a little bit into, you know, the focus side of things and relationships. And I think this is a good point specifically for focus, right? Being proactive, being centered with yourself. Um, what, you know, what caused you to finally, you know, focus? What was the result that you saw when you focus in the company, in these processes uh, that your dad already had built? And what are you seeing with the people that you're helping with? What are the results that they see when they focus on the right things, the, the needle movers? Mm. Mm. So 95% of businesses never make it to a million in annual sales. And then of that, 98% never make it to 5 million. And then of that, 98% never even make it to 10 million. So if you look at what it takes to truly make it from one step of growth, right? You've strong armed it to a million in annual sales. Maybe you can even get it to two, but what's going to get you from two to five is a different skill set. Yeah. And you really have to let go and surrender what you did prior to know that you can get to the next place. And a lot of business owners have a difficult time with that. Maybe they're in control of sales. Maybe they're in control of marketing. But to be able to grow, you have to start putting people into those places. It's something that yeah. I was just interviewing one of my top uh, coaches on last week. And he said, you know, there's a lot of business owners that aren't ready to let go to be mm -hmm. able to grow. Yeah. Uh, which I found really fascinating. But so we have, we basically break down and say there, let's say that there are 12 different areas that will grow your business. So for us, we have 12 core competencies to double your sales. Each chapter is a different core competency, right? And a lot of people come to us saying, wow, I want to do the dream 100 strategy, right? It's the fastest, least expensive way to double sales. That one strategy has doubled the sales of more companies than any other. And yeah. yet, when we dive under the hood, a lot of the time what we find is that they actually run their meetings inefficiently. I mean, 56 million meetings happen every single day that are ineffective. Mm -hmm. So wow. how do you run your meetings? I love that you guys said that, right? Time management, 75% of the workplace is reported ineffective according to Gallup. So mm -hmm. what are you doing to manage your time? These, these are core foundational principles that can dramatically increase sales. And yet how many people are out there looking going, yeah, I think if I ran my meetings better, I could double my sales. Yep. <laughs> not a lot, right? They're not yeah. thinking that. Yeah. Huh. Wow. That's, I mean... I couldn't agree more with that. It's, it's so important that that focus, right? For us, it came when we decided to focus in one specific solution that we offer. Because we used to go to places and we, we branded ourselves at the moment as the anti-marketing agency. So we would go to places and we were like, yeah, we're the anti-marketing agency. And they would look at us like, huh? I don't like my marketing agency. And we're like, yeah, we don't like them either. You know, and guess what? At the end of the day, we would end up doing something pretty similar to what their old marketing agency was, was doing. And but at the same time, we were just doing so many different things. Email marketing, uh, building funnels, nothing very specific where, where we could put 100 percent of our attention. And it wasn't actually until we decided to focus and do the multipurposing of the content, right? Content momentum that we started growing and we were able to now hire a team to help us with fulfillment and all these things. And that's when everything changed for us, when we decided to, okay, let's just do one thing. What is the, the solution that we're offering to people? And now what we're seeing is that transition. Like we got to a point where like, okay, how can we break through that ceiling? Now we need to work from the inside out. What, what is it? inside of the business what is that one thing that we need to focus so we can move on to the next stage and for us we discovered that our sales or sales system or sales process was a little flawed right so guess what we are like head down just working really hard to get that sales system in place so we can move on to the next yeah. stage. Not, not just the system, but the offerings, right? Like we went from one offering of the same product to like a suite of products now. And it's been incredible, right? Like for the past like three weeks, conversations happened. that came from from that focus that, that you mentioned in those stages, mm -hmm. right? Um, so yeah. Oh, so good. Okay. So you mentioned Dream 100. There, <laughs> there, there's a lot of people out there that might know the term. Uh, it's been 
popular around the the community that we kind of started with. Uh, you know, the ClickFunnels community is a big community that we that that we serve, um, and many others are kind of tackling that. Are either very they agree that this is a thing that they gotta do, uh, or they're like against it, right? And 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 that you know that sounds good. We don't budget it, but you're wrong if you are against it. Um, <laughs> But I'm kidding, Amanda. So, so what are what's the Dream 100 in your words? Like, what is it? Yeah, I, like I said before, the fastest, least expensive way to double sales. My father originally created it working for billionaire Charlie Munger. So, what when he first started working for him, he was given a list of 2,000 different potential prospects. When he did some research, he found that 95% of the market was bought by only 167 out of those 2,000. So instead of the spray and pray model, they led an intensive dream effort to just those 167. And at that time, it looked something like, you know, send a mailer on a Tuesday, follow up with a phone call on a Thursday. Uh, um, by Monday, it's an email saying, hey, did you get the mailer, right? Then another Tuesday was another mailer, then a follow-up phone call, then an email, and this just went on for months. So in the first four months, he got not one client. People started talking around the office, right? Like, oh, this guy's a sales superstar, huh? But he hasn't gotten <laughs> one deal. But they were the biggest deals around, right? They were the huge organizations. So in the fifth month, my father closed Xerox as a client. It was huge. One of the largest uh, sales that the industry had ever seen. And subsequently after that, because of Xerox, they gained the trust and notoriety to close 28 more. They doubled sales in the sixth month and doubled sales for three years consecutively and nine divisions. So wow. there was even a moment when the when Charlie Munger called my father into the office and said, are you sure we're not lying, cheating or stealing? Because I've never seen anybody double sell three years in a row. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's magnificent, the power of focus and knowing exactly Exactly who your dream buyer is to go from I've never heard of them before to oh yeah I've heard of them to yes we're working together to I love them I refer them all the clients in the world right or yeah. or if it's an affiliate right I all oh, I perpetually promote them so there's a couple of different ways you can do a dream 100 from B to B to B to C yeah yeah that I, I love that concept and while you were sharing it right I was like huh, I've never seen it in this way kind of like invest is an investment right you're investing in these relationships and you know we live in a culture right now we've mentioned this plenty of times in the podcast that is so fast paced people just want the quick win they just want the growth hacks right and it's like no like invest right now and you can you know uh see the fruits later right of that that relationship and that's what the dream 100 is is planting the seed today but we cannot eat the fruit at the on the same day we're gonna have to wait a little bit right and i think it's is so incredible because obviously i mean your, your dad's story is the, the the testimonial to to the dream 100 that it works and then many people have done it as well right but how do people get in that mindset of long term Right. I mean, you really have to think what's the one client that could completely change your world, right? Who is that one that's just, they buy a dream buyer is someone that buys the most from you the most often, right? So like mm -hmm. for me coming full circle, right? I've been at this time, I had been running the company for seven years and, uh, and I got Berkshire Hathaway as a client and then they wow. got me, um, let's say, yeah dozens of clients from that yeah. one uh, from that one client right and because berkshire hathaway then i got several others because of that name so uh which was just fun you know it's a bucket list for me right because my father yeah. worked for berkshire hathaway and it was and finally i got up the the respect in the industry to be able to work with them as a partner later on so that was nice i, I love it i love it yeah. i love I'm, I'm seeing sorry i know you want to share something here but I, I see the word leverage in this as well right is hey we're, you're working so hard to partner with these companies that you want to serve right these amazing companies and then because of your effort you also get to leverage those relationships that you're building right now right and to a, a bit of a smaller scale, that is something what that we've done with our podcast, right? We started, we actually, 
uh, did an investment about a year ago that, that changed your life into a mastermind. And when we decided to bring guests to the podcast for the f- first time, right, that was around episode 20. We're on episode 163 right now. Uh, we like we're like, OK, what who can we bring? <laughs> and we decided to bring the coaching or mastermind, right, because we had direct access to that person and he was pretty high on the ladder of influence. So whenever we pitched somebody else after we interviewed him, we were like, yeah, this person has been in our podcast, right? And they were like, oh, okay, cool. I'm, I'm down to go. And we've done that and we've managed to get incredible people, right? Like Todd Brown, Chris Doe, like so many incredible entrepreneurs. And now every single time that we're going to, you know, try to get somebody in the podcast, we tell them like, hey, these people have been in this podcast as well. And I see that aspect in the dream 100, right? As soon as you start working with these bigger names, it's like m- more doors start opening. You climb up the ladder of influence and you're working with, you know, that top company. And now you're saying, okay, let me work with, you know, the top companies that might be a smaller level under them, but the doors is going to open in, yeah. a, in a faster way. So, so here's the, the image, right? That as you were explaining it, like you see like this little like balloon kind of, you know, bucket, right? And then you start adding marbles or rocks and little things, right? And it's going to start stretching. It's going to start like stretching, adding a little bit of weight, right? And you're like, man, nothing's really happening. But then you add another one, then you add another one. And here and there, and those are points of contact, right? Really high quality point of contact, genuine points of contact, right? Like ser- serving first, right? And then all of a sudden, there's this little hole that opens like right in the middle the balloon and like one drops and then second drop and then three drops and this hole just opens up and that was the image that was coming to my head as you were explaining i'm a very visual guy so like i I think that's incredible because sometimes we don't know like how long this stretching is gonna go for but we gotta keep going we gotta keep adding those pebbles those marbles right and uh, eventually that's gonna happen if we act in a genuine way now Here's my follow-up question to this and what Fonzie was saying about leverage. My Some people might see or might interpret the word leverage as a negative thing. Like, I'm taking advantage of this, right? And that when we first started, that came to, to the table. We're like, man, like, uh, they, like, does it feel fishy? Does it? Like not really we're actually like leading with a genuine care like we're serving like in our process we're 100 percent confident but we've heard those things from other people that we might explain the process of the show for example so what is your take on leverage um is, is it a positive thing is it a good thing is that something that we normally talk about when dream 100 uh what what is your your opinion on that very specific word <laughs> I mean, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by leverage being uh, questionable. Usually you you need leverage. Yeah, leverage is is huge. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know in what context you're talking that it would be. A negative I mean, that, thing. Yeah, yeah. So so the fact that you answered that way means that it is a very positive thing for you, right? Like, so we, we've we heard the comments. And again, like, I'm, I'm playing a little devil's advocate here. Like, we 100%, you know, agree with you for the record. But here's like, for some of the comments, be like, huh, that might be fishy. Why would you be like, are you taking advantage of that relationship? And I'm like, not, not really. We're adding value to each other, right? Like we're providing a solution on, on the, let's say it's, uh, it's your client, right? You're providing a solution there. You're being, you're helping them. They're getting amazing success. Why should I not be allowed to leverage that relationship to continue to grow with them as well? Right? So those are, comments and different things that we've heard in different marketplaces and maybe it's a mental space that different entrepreneurs might be at at the moment or they don't trust their own process that's kind of like a little bit of the background that i wanted to play a little bit devil's advocate okay, but the fact that you answer that way you're like <laughs> i mean i'm not even in that mental place right like i'm this is a completely positive thing yeah I'm, i don't think i'm following you on what what you're talking about exactly if you gave me a specific example maybe i could assist but uh as far as building relationships that's that's what a dream 100 is is you build a a relationship and that isn't something where you're trying to steal from them right it's a it's a long-term relationship it's something that carries out over time and you give and you give and you give and then at some point you ask for something in return and then you continue to give and that and that is truly what a positive relationship is right it's not it's not transactional it's something that lasts as long as possible so what can you do to leave that lasting impression i know for me i was trying to get the attention of dave woodward of click funnels the president of funnels now ceo and 
uh, I had followed up via uh, Instagram after I met him at an event. And for every single day for three months, I commented on every single post he had. Uh, he'd post about his children. He made a bet with his son that he couldn't um, eat sugar for 24 hours and he couldn't even last four hours. And you know, <laughs> he bet $10. And I'm like, ha, huh, that was hilarious. You should have bet 50, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> like little funny, random comments that would keep me top of mind. So he didn't That's reply nothing. to majority of these, you know, he bought shoes and he said, you know, I'm about to go hiking. And I said, Hey, I climbed Kilimanjaro. I know for a fact that if you go hiking on really new shoes, you're bound to get in a lot of pain. So you really want to wear in those shoes before you go for a long expedition in new shoes, you know, just value right i want when yeah. he thinks of me i want him to feel that i'm giving value that i'm a valuable resource so that when that time comes when he does need my services i'm the first thing he thinks of that is creating top of mind awareness and is the, that is the number one goal of marketing to create yeah. top of mind awareness right toma so uh three months of this where just every i have screenshots of this it's hysterical mm -hmm. i keep commenting right and every once in a while he puts like a little heart to to reply to what i'm saying so it was mostly a one-way conversation right where i'm just like oh trying to be as entertaining and hilarious as possible i'm having a blast i'm laughing hysterically at my comments <laughs> but it was yeah. enough, but it was enough to where after three months finally they needed a book to send out to their two comma club members and they came to me him and russell yeah. and said hey we'd we'd like to buy you know a couple hundred uh ultimate sales machine books is that okay and i thought of course it's okay <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's a question. <laughs> but um yeah, because creating that top of mind awareness and creating that relationship that there was leverage there. Right. And then when I came to release the dream buyer course, uh, I had one dream affiliate in mind. Right. I needed the, the validation of Russell. Even Russell learned the concept from my father. Right. Yes, yes. Um But then to reach out to him and say, hey, I'd love to interview you for our launch. And, and it wasn't just one, um, one email, right? I emailed him. I texted him. I Facebook messaged him. I Instagram DM'd him. I contacted, uh, Dave Woodward. I got him to say yes. Then I came back around to Russell and I said, Hey, I got Dave to say, yes. Can you do it now? Are you okay? On Friday, uh, he said, yes. By Monday we, we were, I did the interview and it was part of my launch. So, um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, incredible. incredible. Being in their face, in their place, in their space. That's what a dream 100 is about. In their face, in their place, in their space, providing value to create that top of mind awareness so that they become clients and they become clients forever. Absolutely. Yeah. Amanda, I don't know if you heard that, but the crowd just went it absolutely went crazy. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. I, I love this. This talks about the, the proactiveness that we were talking about, right? And, and not giving up. Like, we live in a world there's a lot of noise right a lot of people get a lot of uh, a lot of messages and dms and usually the people that we want to connect the most are going to be the people that are getting the most amount of messages and like you mentioned toma right top of mind awareness is so so important yeah. and how do we do that with consistency let's be consistent we we say consistency is art Right, and art is an acronym for authority, relevancy, and trust. Like the more consistent you are, we usually talk about it in the context of content, but I think it is, is the same in the context of following up with people, right? The more they see you, the more they're gonna trust you, right? Yeah. They are gonna check, check out who you are. They're gonna click in your profile because it takes them 0 0.5 seconds and they're gonna read your bio. They're gonna see who you are. They're gonna see if you're legit and they might not engage with you, but they're gonna know already who you are. And if you're always in front of them, you're, you know, you're kind of like resetting that top of mind awareness. And I think it's fantastic. I love that that example with, with Dave Woodward and Russell, I think we need to definitely upper outreach oh, and follow a, a up. hundred percent. Yes. I mean, we, yeah, I remember it was the son Parker. Cause, uh, we, we can, we can, <laughs> the shooter son was, was that Parker? Uh, he has been hilarious. He's been on the show. Uh, but yes, a hundred percent. And, and this is what, what struck with me is simple, right? It's just mm -hmm. be genuine about this, this 
comment or the interaction that you're gonna have with yeah. them, right? That provide provide value. And now we live in a day and age that this is so simple, right? Like go back to your dad, right? Like what what were the methods, right? Like mail, like in person calls, like it's different things. Right now we have this little device that we can be present, dedicate 10 minutes a day, right? Like 10 minutes before find your primer. Like I'm going to eat lunch. Okay. 10 minutes before eating lunch, I'm going to dedicate to go into my dream 100 and see what they're doing and commenting and adding value. What is it? Right. And, and this has to become a habit, right? And this has to be a daily practice whatsoever, yeah. right? Like, so I, I, I think it's uh, thank you for bringing this to, to, to this day and age, because I feel a lot of people that are starting their businesses can be really there's a there's a lower barrier to get started with this thing like it doesn't have to be a massive investment it's gonna be your time and in 10 minutes a day really um let's go to our phones and see how much time are we spending on screen and you know just swiping left and right like right and if this is the the best way to double your sales heck yeah let's do it yeah. right <laughs> i mean what one of our, our mentors he, he told us there is no like perfect sales system there's no perfect content system like what you have is just a relentless commitment to iteration, right? And this is it. Like, this is what it's all about. You're do that investment takes time and is long term. We already established that, right? So I think people just need to sit down, avoid the shiny objects and be like, I'm going to do this for the long term. Because at the end of the day, you're gaining relationships with first. Yes, you're gaining business. But the value of having incredible relationships, like it just changes your life. And I'm curious on that side in your own personal life. How has, you know, building these new relationships with people that are in your dream 100 change, uh, you know, the way you live or, or uh, your day to day? A crucial part of the dream 100 is figuring out who is truly your dream 100. So when I first started, I went after the big names because I just wanted the fame, right? I wanted everyone to know that I had worked with these big names and uh, whether it be the Fortune 500, I was the first one to close a Fortune 500 client since my father uh, had passed. It had been a long time and um, uh, I was looking for the notoriety. But the more that I worked, the more I realized that a true dream 100 is someone that will work with you forever, that you enjoy working with it. When you walk in the room, you are the best option for them and they have been waiting and they want you more than you would ever want them. I mean, wow, wouldn't that be nice, right? When you walk in a room, they, they need you more than you need them. So it's, it's really a question of asking who, who is that for me? Who is that that will continue to work with me forever because we just work so well together? And that sometimes gets lost in the fray when we're just like, okay, what's the biggest I could possibly do and how can I close them? Well, maybe you close them for one contract, but then you know you can't you can't get them ongoing. So yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of steps to figuring out who that that ideal is. So for me, one of the big ones. Uh, that were affiliates, first I went after the ones that had the most followings, right? Multi-million uh, followers. And then I realized that um, they weren't really my ideal prospects. So then I started partnering with organizations that did technology. So they assisted in the process of marketing and sales. We're much more about the strategy behind that and the messaging behind that. Who yeah. should you be reaching out to? What should you say, right? What is that process? So we were great compliments. So I worked with lead pages. They, at the time, you know, they were the number one fastest growing company in Minnesota, but they, they did very well. In four years, they got 44,000 clients without wow. having a sales team, which is unreal they did it yeah. all through content marketing and webinars wow. um, so uh lead pages was a great one um inside sales was a great one so finding who your dream buyer really is is it takes it takes tweaking it takes practice but yeah. then once you know who that is can you replicate it can it be duplicatable can it be something that's systematized so that it's not just you said business owner it's a team of people right yeah, yeah. absolutely i you just spoke her language systematized right i think that is so important that is something uh 
honestly, I think the first time that I was introduced to that might have been in the Ultimate Sales Machine. Honestly, uh, th those meetings and then like, okay, let's do this, figure it out a way to systematize it, and then iterate through that process. And we we do the same thing with content, right? It's like first we were the first ones to do it, and then it's like, how can we systematize it? And now the team comes in and they do the rest. And it's so, so important because now it gives you the time to, you know, bird's eye view, maybe a step out of yeah. that system and work on some other different things as well, or develop new new other relationships, which yeah. is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, as we as we're wrapping up the interview, I mean, this this hour went by so quick, <laughs> too, yeah. too quick. Uh, but here's here's the last couple of questions, right? Like for for that community that have been listening and paying attention to you, the Dream One Hundred, and and want to double their sales, right? What is what is the the number one thing that they can do right now to to start creating that momentum? Buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I recommend the ultimate sales machine. It's in the top 10 most recommended sales books of all time at this point, which is really wonderful. I mean, word of mouth, right? I have not even yep. done much of anything over the last eight years to promote it. It's just yep. continued to sustain. So if you yep. want decades worth of um, knowledge that came from my father for 16 bucks, I mean, that's the best ROI I can possibly start with, right? Or if you're like, yeah. okay, I really can't spend a dime, then we give chapter four for free. So yeah. I also recommend that, right? How to how to get nine times more impact from every move you make. That would be really great. Um, I love it. And and the first chapter, time management secrets of billionaires, right? How the five steps or the six steps that it takes you in the morning to increase your productivity by five hundred percent. Just start working on you and maximizing your time because billionaires have the same 24 hours in a day as all the rest of us. It's just their masters at time. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. I love it. Yeah. I, we're going to leave the link right below. So yeah. all you got to do is uh, just scroll down and click in there. Go by it. It's, it's probably the best investment that you've yeah. ever got. I, I just wanted to add to that. If you cannot afford the book, just send us a DM, say in the ultimate sales machine, and we'll send you the book. I think yes. that's a, that's, uh, I think that's a uh, good, that, good, that, good deal. I right think that's there. a good deal. Yeah. Fonsi, yeah. Good job. I mean, uh, it, it's, I'm telling you like, it's, I mean, not just by the amount of notes, but is that I like a book. I judge a book by the amount of times I go back to it to like reference things and this is definitely on the top. Like it's yeah. one of those that I've referenced the most that I go back to because of those principles and foundations. So I know I can do that same thing for others. So if you're in need of the book and you cannot afford it, please let us know and we'll yeah. send it to you. And that where, um, last question, our favorite question, uh, where will you be if you did not publish, right? If you don't put your message out there, if you don't show up to interviews, if you don't do interviews, like where, where will you be? What do you mean? Where will I be? Like, like what would, yeah, yeah, what would be of your life right now if you did not publish? If you didn't create content? Um, you mean just in general, like yep. for business owners, if they're not out there doing things, or so, you so mean some of the answers, yeah? So some of the answers. That, oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, if I wasn't running my business, I, I, I'm. Not quite sure which well, here's a little, you're here's, at. Yeah, here's a little bit of background for, for the question, right? Like publishing for us changed everything. The, the, we have different coaches, different people along the last like four years that were like, guys, you got to put your message out there. You got to be out there. You got to start creating those relationships, yeah. uh, starting having conversations with your dream clients, we may be people that might, you think that are dream clients, but they're really not. And then how do you find out, right, through conversations like this, right? And for us, this is the vehicle that we chose. We chose a, a video podcast and there's there's different assets that come after that, that then we've been able to build an incredible community, right? We launched a, a channel, a, a challenge not so long ago, 45 Live, going live for 45 days. We had 100 people being part of it and it was incredible. And what an incredible experience. So for us, it changed everything, right? So. Um, everybody that we bring, they publish at some degree, and uh, and for some that has a meaning, for some others it doesn't really have change anything. But we just want to know, like, what what has publishing meant to you, your company, uh, personal growth, business growth? Uh, if none of those sounds good too, uh, yeah. Okay, so for me, it's just a little bit different because I inherited uh, my father's life work 
in a book, right? So if it, it has always been for me that we have thousands of business owners on a monthly basis that are learning about our methodology. So mm -hmm. I wasn't even publishing. My father did the decades of work and then the two years, one hour a week to write that book. And because of that, his legacy carried on past his death, right? And has been able to move on to me as a second generation business owner. Um, and, and I'm sure it will carry on beyond me as well. Uh, I, I'm seeing to it that it will. So yeah. to me, if, if, if he hadn't done that groundwork to publish and to do and, and to document all of the knowledge that he had, yeah, we, yeah. there would be nothing for anybody to be reading or recommending or, so I would start even from yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean. The, that word that you said, legacy, it's so important. It's so, it's so powerful, right? And uh, we now can create that, right? For for us, for the company, for our families, for our businesses. And, and you know, you, you guys are the living proof of that. And thank you for leading the way. Thank you for, you know, continue to, to share this with the rest of the world. And uh, yeah, thank you for, for showing up. Yeah, thank you so much for, for your honesty and, and for sharing this time with us. Any last thought that maybe we might have missed that you would like to share with the, the audience? Uh, I guess ultimately it's about you doing it the way you being you. And that's where the most fulfillment comes is, uh, you know, trying to win Dave Woodward's business. I didn't do it any other way, but just the way that I found it to be entertaining and engaging and for me, yeah. I like things to be fun. I don't know, maybe other people don't like to have fun, but I like <laughs> to have fun. So it, it keeps me motivated and engaged. So, you know, grant yourself the permission to operate from a higher, I always say I grant myself permission to connect to my higher self, something that I learned from my guru. And I think that that's a wonderful mantra to just live life by. Uh, yeah. Then you take the high road and sometimes it's the longer road, but it's the f bountiful one with much more abundance. So, um, yeah. yeah, do you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. Amanda, yeah. I'm going to throw this out there. I would love to have an, a part two conversation about these teachings and, and, and things that you learn from your guru. I think it would be <laughs> in, an incredible conversation. I would love, I would love that. Um, a little, a little selfishly, I would love that conversation. <laughs> um, but thank you so much. It, it resonated. Do, do it your way. Uh, if you want to have fun with it, have, have fun with it. If you don't like to have fun, well, do it in a way where you're not having fun. <laughs> but it, 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 it's so important uh, what you just shared. Uh, where can people find you? Where can they connect with you? Uh, you know, send you, send you funny messages and you know become friends with you. Uh, you can go to ultimate sales .com, Same name as the book, right? Ultimate sales machine. And there we have three wonderful, uh, videos that are for free that teach how to get nine times more impact from every move you make. It goes more into the dream buyer strategy and also how to hire sell superstars. Uh, that's a really wonderful one hour a week formula to double your sales. Uh, and then if you want to say hello, you can always DM me on Instagram. And my name is Amandita Holmes. My salsa yes. name is yes. oh, nice. Chicken, so. yeah, We're going to have to go down salsa now. Just saying. Yeah, Just say. saying. Oh, oh, boy. <laughs> you start me on salsa and never stop. Let's do it. Let's do it. Also, Before we <laughs> yes. Oh, this is going to be amazing. By the way, if you're going to throw another one of those Zoom concerts, that was great. I recommend people to join. You're a great singer as well. So yeah, that, that'll be amazing. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, this was so good. I All know. right. With that said, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit smash that follow button on social media at BizBrosCo. That is right. And if you find today's episode impactful and helps you move one step closer to your goal, please, please don't forget to share it. And, and go and show Amandita Holmes some love. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.